Okay, so uh, I have the piston at top dead center. Uh, just a habit of mine, even though the cams aren't in, and I know the timing really doesn't make a difference. Just, uh, you know, what I'm used to doing. You could probably pressurize the cylinder even if, uh, even if the piston's at the bottom. I haven't tried it, but anyway. I'm using a snap-on cylinder leak tester tool to pressurize the cylinder. I'm on number two right now on the first exhaust valve. So you get this into position, you give this just a, just a little bit of tension, and let me grab my hammer. And what I'm going to do is just tap on the top. So I get position this. I'm going to tap on the top of this a couple times just to jar the uh, the keepers from the retainer and I'll show you what I mean so I'm going to tap it once tap it twice make sure it's still tight and that'll allow this to compress if you watch really slowly ah, this is going to turn as I do this it's See, you can see the keepers starting to fall out now. Okay. I'm going to grab a magnet here to remove the keepers. Looks like this. Go ahead and grab that. And if you have to get one at a time, it's not a big deal. Sometimes you might find that. Uh, and you need to maneuver this around a little bit or even use a flat blade to get the other one out if it's really stuck have to move this a little bit there we go see if I can get this in the camera view see the keeper Now that that's out, um, we're going to unloosen this. It's going to decompress the spring. It's going to allow us to change the spring out. Now, uh, if you're unfamiliar with why I'm putting air into the cylinder, it's because we want to keep the valve from dropping into the cylinder. It's also another good reason why you keep the piston at top dead center, is because for any reason, if you lose air or the crank turns or God forbid uh, you lose air pressure. Hopefully the piston being all the way up won't allow that valve to fall into the engine. If that falls into the engine, well, you're probably going to be pulling the head out. So this is the spring I just removed and the retainer. Let me get a, a new one. side-by-side -side comparison so that that is the ZZP one verse see if it'll focus first the OEM one it's a much bigger retainer stiffer spring but you can still use the same keepers I'm gonna go ahead you just slide this in here, get it into position, and then to help aid in putting the keepers back in so they don't fall out, uh, I'm using this engine assembly lubricant, and the reason is, if you look at the stuff is very sticky, you see how it's like pulling away with my finger? When you push the keepers onto the valve stem, this will stick. You have to excuse my air compressor here. I'll try to talk a little louder. Hopefully it'll pick me up. But uh, I'm going to pour a glob of this into the center so it gets around the valve stem and on top of the keeper, or uh, I'm sorry, the retainer. We'll go ahead, put this back into place. What I 
like to do is since this is on an angle, if the keeper is going to fall, it's going to fall with gravity, right? So if it falls, it's going to fall over the back here, and this tool will kind of catch it. I like to try to keep this aligned like this for this side as much as I can to prevent any accidents. Uh, looks like I still got to go down quite a bit. So you can even pull that into place too. Okay. On this engine, they're uh, single groove keepers. Some engine they have more than one. Just some information. Uh, let's see how am I going to do this with the camera. What I like to do is, uh, yeah, it's a little tricky with this one. So I like to hold it with both fingers. Uh, try to get it in there. Here. difficult but you just have to try to figure out a way to get your fingers in there with one and when you do this you can use a small, small screwdriver you see how I prop that up like there and it's staying you don't want to do that and then rotate this around so you can get the other half in there. It's a very tedious process. I like to refer to this as like doing surgery on an engine because it's very meticulous and you have to be very careful. Trying to get the second one in here. And we just kind of, if we need to, here we go, we just gently push it with the screwdriver, each side, make sure it's tight. And when you go up with this, you want to make sure, if you have to, you can put some sideways pressure on this to make sure the hole is lined up for the keepers. Just to make sure that they get centered and don't come out of place when you're decompressing the spring. There's a lot of pressure on the spring. As you can tell. That's all there is to it. For this engine, the four cylinder, four valves per cylinder, 16 of these. I have, uh, what is that now, one, four done. 25% the way there. And, um, I don't know, for some reason, I looked online, nobody had any videos of this particular engine, let alone using this particular tool on an overhead cam engine. But uh, what's nice about this tool is you can pretty much use it on really any overhead cam engine, I'd assume. You know, as long as you got some washers and you got the bolt holes to line up, this thing pivots, it slides back and forth too. So you can get everything lined up no matter where your mounting holes are at. And uh, yeah, it's probably the best one I've used. The only other style I've used before was one where it has a lever and you have to hold the lever as you pull the keepers out with your other hand and it's just, it's a major task. So uh, I highly recommend this thing. And uh, yeah, makes your job a thousand times easier.